Step two, coherent states. So the states that we considered up to this point uh, were very simple states. We are writing down ket of 0, ket of 1, or in more general cases, ket of n. And we call these states for 0, it was the vacuum, for 1, it was our toy model of a single photon state. And together, this class is called as the number states. They are the eigenstates of the single mode quantum harmonic oscillator and also of the single mode um, number operator. And they have one common property. They've got the peculiar property that their average of the electric field when prepared in one of these states is always zero. Regardless of in which number state you prepare your quantum light to be in, the average of the E field is always zero. So we can ask the question, is this always true for any quantum state of light? And of course, the answer is no. So to see first why number states give us the average zero, Let's consider the following case. This is our operator for the electric field. It's got this multiplication factor in front uh, along with the polarization vector. And here uh, it depends on the hat A, the annihilation operator for the mode, and the creation operator for the mode, multiplied by the respective uh, exponentials. Really, now what's important are just the creation and annihilation operators. So let's think what happens when we sandwich this uh, operator between two number states. So from the left, we're multiplying it by the brow of n, and from the right, we're multiplying by the uh, ket of n. We have seen that the annihilation operator annihilates one quantum in the field, or removes one photon from the field. So uh, we obtain ket n minus 1, and we said that the number states form an orthonormal basis meaning the two number states with different n's are orthogonal. In other words, their product is zero. So the average of a, when the state is in a number state, always gives us zero, regardless of n. And similarly for the average of a dagger, for the creation operator for the mode, the average of that operator is also zero, meaning that the whole average for the electric field must be also zero for any number state. So in order, for this average to be non-zero, we must consider superposition of number states. For example, if we have an equal superposition of n and n minus 1, then we have the following case. When we apply uh, the annihilation operator for the mode onto this term, we obtain the following. We obtain a sum of n minus 1 and n minus 2. Now we see that if we look at the inner products, this bra n, when multiplied by n minus 1 or n minus 2, is always 0. It's always orthogonal to those states, so that disappears. Similarly, this term, n minus 2, also disappears. But n minus 1 has an overlap with this n minus 1. So the average of the creation operator, when we prepare our quantum light in this superposition of n and n minus 1, is half square root of n. So now we know how to obtain a, a finite average of the electric field for a quantum state. It must be a superposition of number states. And coherent states are such a superposition. But it's not just any superposition, it's got a very particular shape, which we will derive now. In one short sentence, coherent states are eigenstates of the annihilation operator. Now, what does this mean? Let's do some maths. We start with the following eigenvalue equation. Uh, we denote by alpha the coherent state. And when it acts on, uh, when the uh, annihilation operator acts on our coherent state alpha, it pulls out a complex eigenvalue alpha in front of the state. So this is just the usual uh, eigenvalue problem. The difference is that alpha is a complex number. And that's because A is not an observable. It's not a Hermitian. Uh, operator, meaning that its eigenvalues are in principle complex. So number states form a complete orthonormal basis, meaning that we can use them to expand any other state in terms of the number states. So we can write our alpha as a simple sum going from n equals to 0 to infinity of some probability amplitude cn and our ket n. Now the question is, what are these CNs, such that the following property 
is obtained, that alpha is an eigenstate of the annihilation operator. What we can do is we can take our uh, eigenvalue equation and substitute for ket alpha. On the left-hand side, what we obtain is the following sum. When we have a acting on 0, that term disappears. So we have the following sum, not going from n equals 0, but n going from 1 to infinity, cn times square root of n times the number state n minus 1, because a lowers, uh, lowers the number from n to n minus 1. And on the right-hand side, we just substitute our expansion for uh, ket alpha, for the coherent state. Now what we can do is we can just write out the sum to see more clearly what's happening. So for the first term, when n equals 1, we've got c1 times square root of 1, which is just 1, times the vacuum, because here we have 1 minus 1, plus the second term, c2 times square root of 2 times ket1, and so on. And similarly, on the right-hand side, we've got the following expansion. Now, in order for both sides to be equal, we must have that the coefficient for 0 on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are also equal. Similarly, the coefficient in front of ket1 must be equal on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. And this must be true for any n. Therefore, we can write the following recursion relations. We've got, from the left-hand side, we've got the cn times square root of n must be equal to alpha times cn minus 1. And this is a general recursion relation which is satisfied for coherent states. So we can obtain the value of the probability amplitude for the term n, which is cn, in terms of the amplitude for a lower number state, cn minus 1, multi by multiplying it by this following, um, following fraction. Alpha, which is the complex eigenvalue coming from this eigenvalue equation, divided by square root of n. But that's not all. We can re-express cn minus 1 in terms of cn minus 2 in the following way. We multiply by alpha divided by square root of n minus 1. And we can go on and on and on until we find an expression in terms of c0. And given here. So any, any probability amplitude cn can be written in terms of c0 using this following fraction. The question now is, great, now we can write our expansion for the uh, ket alpha for our coherent state where c0 appears in front of every, every number state. But what is c0? Well, that's determined by the normalization condition. We demand that our coherent state, our expansion in terms of number states, is properly normalized. Therefore, we say that 1 is equal to inner product of alpha with itself. So we can just substitute in our expression and we obtain the following double sum. We get that the modulus of c0 squared is this double sum running over indices n and m, and then this fraction, alpha conjugate, because it's a complex number, to the power of m times alpha to the power of n divided by square root of m factorial times n factorial, times the inner product between number states m and n. But we know what that is. All the number states are orthogonal, uh, unless they're the same number state. So our double sum simplifies to a single sum over the following expression. And here we can recognize this. This is nothing but the Taylor expansion for an exponential. Therefore, we can write that uh, this is equal, the sum is equal to c0 modulo squared times e to the power of mod alpha squared. And there we have it. We've got an expression for c0 by equating it to 1, and we find that c0 is e to the power of minus a half times modulus of alpha squared. And now we are done with finding the expressions for an expansion of coherent state in terms of the number states. It's the following. Our number state given by complex number alpha is this long expression. We have seen that these probability amplitudes which are inside the sum which vary and depend on n, come from the recursion relation, while the exponential outside of the sum comes from the normalization condition. In the future step, we will explore what such a state um, tells us about the uncertainty relations.